Two lovers traumatized by their childhood go on a mass murder spree. During this spree, they are glorified by the media. This movie's insane. It goes through several different forms of presentation, several different types of genres. It's a gritty crime drama. It's a love story. It's an action movie. It's a sitcom. It's a cartoon. It's so many different things all at once. It's really heavily stylized, and I'm not sure how to feel about that. Part of me wonders if the movie would work better if it maintained a consistent tone. But at the same time, I think it's a really clever idea to present one of the characters' backgrounds in a sitcom sort of fashion. That sequence establishes a sort of family type of life, and then proceeds to destroy the idea of the happy American family. And that character's traumatic past is sort of emphasized by the Brady Bunch presentation of her trauma. But at the same time, all these weird tonal shifts at the beginning of the film is very off-putting. Maybe that's the point, but it still just kind of takes you out of just a little bit. There is, however, one theme that is consistent throughout the whole film. Absurdity. Every main character in the film is insane in one way or another. Our two leads are mass murderers who had horrific childhoods and have no respect for life and they will murder whoever they want. There are two cops who have absurdly violent attitudes towards crime and are just horrifically insane. And there's a television journalist who has no moral center, who glorifies horrific murder, and is just an all-around piece of crap. And this movie portrays a public that is totally rooting for these two mass murderers. The movie is ridiculous, but in a way that feels true and human and it's saying something about us and our depiction of violence. Every performance in this movie is electric. Every actor is giving it their all for Oliver Stone. Woody Harrelson manages to somehow be both charismatic but terrifying as this mass murderer. His great comedic timing, he feels natural, but at the same time he's able to portray this dementia so perfectly. Juliette Lewis plays the other and more vulnerable half of this mass murdering, violent, horrific couple. She does a great job of showing us how her trauma has affected her in a way that causes her to do these things. And even after all the horrible things that she does, we still somehow end up feeling for her and rooting for her. She's just an actress who's very easy to follow. And the movie does not shy away from showing you that these are not good people. Opening scene, they're in a diner. And some dudes come in who are sexually harassing Juliette Lewis. And so, they kill those guys. You think, alright, I'm with these people. Maybe they're not the best people, but hey, look, they're killing these guys. And then they kill an innocent woman. That's what the movie does the whole time. It's forcing you to go along with these people who are horrible, and you keep following them because these actors are so charismatic. Tom Sizemore plays the detective going after these people, and it's very clear that he is psychotic in his own right, and that his motivations for doing this are selfish. He has very violent impulses, he uses his police experiences for profit, and he's just a horrible person. Now, I'm not sure what the purpose of him being such a horrible person is other than to make you root for Woody Harrelson and Juliette Lewis. But I also don't care because Tom Sizemore plays him brilliantly. Perfectly hateable, he's naturalistic, he's even funny at times, which is a strange thing to say. He's just so good at being so disgusting. Tommy Lee Jones plays a prison warden who is completely crazy in tons of different ways. Treats his prisoners like animals, he doesn't look at them as human beings, and he throws these childlike temper tantrums that Tommy Lee Jones is so brilliant at portraying. It's a performance that's energetic and super funny, but at the same time, it's super creepy and disturbing and upsetting. And Tommy Lee Jones was perfectly cast. Now, while all those performances are great, by far, the best performance in this movie is Robert Downey Jr. He plays a scumbag TV journalist 
who glorifies murder and gets ratings and profit off of these horrible murders. One person who's always been absolutely electric on screen is Robert Downey Jr. He knows how to deliver high energy performances that make us laugh. And his performance in this movie is so brilliantly pathetic and disgusting and slimy. And his performance contributes to the movie's absurdist viewpoints. Watching his character struggle is just so hilarious and you just can't keep your eyes off of it. This is a movie that's very disturbing and challenging and you just won't really know what to think by the end of it. It says a lot about the depiction of violence in our media, the way that we sensationalize it and glorify it. The movie has a lot to say and it could probably lead to some really fascinating discussion. And even though it's very off-putting and strange in its presentation, it's still brilliant in a certain way. It's darkly humorous, but disturbing. It's painful, but engaging. You just don't really know what to make of it. Even if it's not perfect, it's still this endlessly fascinating film. I'd love to hear tons of intelligent discussions about it. I'm gonna give Natural Born Killers an A-.